Hey guys, um, we're continuing on with our baseball theme. So I'm going to read you Casey at Bat. And it was illustrated by Christopher Bing. And it's a ballad of the Republic sung in the year 1888. So it's actually based on like a, a song. Casey at the Bat. The outlook wasn't brilliant for the Mudville Nine. That day, the score stood for four to two with, with but one inning more to play. And then, when Cooney died at first and Barrows did the same, a sickly science, silence fell upon the patrons of the game. A straggling few got up to go deep in deep despair. The rest clung to the hope which springs internal in the most human breast. They thought of only Casey could but get a whack at that. We'd put up even money now with Casey at the bat. But Flynn proceed, preceded Casey, as did also Jimmy Blake, and the former was a Lulu, and the later was a cake. So upon the stricken multitude, Grim and Melacony set, for there seemed to be little chance of Casey getting to the bat. But Flynn let a drive a single to the wonderment of all, and Blake the much despised toward the cover off the ball. And when the dust had lifted, and the men saw what had occurred, there was a Jimmy safe at second, and Flynn a hugging third. Then from five thousand throats, throats and more, there rose a lusty yell. It rumbled through the valley, and it rattled in the dell. It knocked upon the mountain and recoiled upon the flat, for Casey, mighty Casey, was advancing to the bat. There was ease in Casey's manners as he stepped up to his place. There was a pride in Casey's bearing and a smile on Casey's face. And when they responding to the cheers, he lightly doffed his hat. No stranger to, in the crowd could doubt that twas Casey at the bat. There he is, tipping his hat. Ten thousand eyes were on him as he rump, rubbed his hands with dirt. Five thousand tongues applauded when he wiped them on his shirt. Then, while the raving picture ground the ball into his hip, defiance gleamed in Casey's eyes and a sneer curled on Casey's hip. Uh, lip. And now the leather-covered spear came hurtling through the air, and Casey stood a-watching in a haughty gander there. Close by the sturdy batsman, the ball of unheeded speed sped. That ain't my style, said Casey. Strike one, the umpire said. <laughs> From the benches, Black with people, there went up a muffled roar, like the beating of the storm waves on the stern and distant shore. Kill him! Kill the umpire! shouted someone in the stands, and it's likely they'd have killed him had not Casey raised his hands. With a smile of a Christian charity, great Casey's vision this is shown. He stilled the rising trumpet, and he, and he bade the game go on. He signaled to the picture, and once more, the spheroid flew. But Casey still ignored it, and the umpire said, "Strike two. Fraud! Cried the Madden Thousand, and echoed, answered, "Fraud." But one scornful look from Casey, and the audience was awed. They saw his face grow stern and cold. They saw his muscles strain, and they knew that Casey wouldn't let that ball go by again.
The sneer is gone from Casey's lip. His teeth were clenched in hate. He pounds with cruel violence and backed upon the plate. And now the pitcher holds the ball and now he lets it go. And now the air is shattered by the force of Casey's blow. Oh, somewhere in this favored land, the sun is shining bright. The band is playing somewhere, and somewhere hearts are light. And somewhere men are laughing, and somewhere children shout. But there is no joy in Mudville. Mighty Casey struck out. The end. Sometimes it doesn't work out the way we want it to. Mighty Casey struck out. I hope you enjoyed the book. Bye, guys.